If you have your Bibles with you, my dear friends, kindly join us as we read our passage this morning found in Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21, which says, <coughs> When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages to buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. Verse 20, They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the word of the Lord. Insufficiency equals rejoice. Wonder why? How could we be insufficient and yet be rejoicing? Okay, so dear friends, don't be shy to share your opinions and your insights as what you might think or if you agree with this one. Insufficiency equals rejoice. When we are insufficient, Meaning to say that we are in need of something, right? So there is something lacking if we are insufficient, right? So nowadays, many of us are lacking of money, right? Yesterday morning, uh, after we watched the, another musical play of Tiririt, the mga ibon by the alumni of uh, the little theater in West Visayas, we went to a fast food and, and ate. And then, two of our kids were counting their money and uh, medyo kulang. <clears throat> and I only have 200 in my pocket left. So I said, putting mo stay aside, ah. And so I said, do you still have enough? As if I have enough. <laughs> As if I have enough. It's just good that my kid, he said, students, okay lang dad, I have enough. So turning back to these two kids, to these two boys, and then they said, yes sir, we have enough. Okay. So they were the left to fall in line and said, are you sure you have enough? And so, uh, looking at my coin purse, I still have a few coins, I said, here, Add it. To make the long story short, the funny thing is, when they ordered, they said, so what did you get for your for your lunch? And then the boy said, we just had ice cream, sir. Why did you just have ice cream for your lunch? And you still have change. May 50 pesos pa sila sobra. And she said, go buy something, like a burger or something that could still fit the, the change. And so they bought and we all had lunch together. This is one vivid example that I can think of 
that though we are insufficient, but yet we could rejoice together. Though we have a few food on the table, but we were having a great time having lunch and talking and bonding together. So my dear friends, when we talk about insufficiency, we are not just talking about funds or money, which is very obvious nowadays. We might even have insufficient manpower, right? In our churches, we would say we have insufficient church members. But here in MCBC, we always have enough. Naksa. Now, we always have enough because we believe that few as we are, we have you guys joining us on social media that makes us rejoice. We have technology that few as we are, insufficient capacities as we are, we can rejoice because we have technology. We may have insufficient talents and skills. We might not be able to sing properly, libagon, right? Or we might not have so much skill. But again, we have technology, my YouTube, <laughs> so we can sing. No? We might have insufficient abilities, physical strength. Speaking of physical strength, we are now indeed aging. Aging gracefully, right? So we should accept the fact that nobody is becoming or staying young, but all of us are aging gracefully. And that sooner or later, ipahilayo, magagamit kita sa baston. <laughs> right? Ay, kagawa pa kay Mother Lord. Okay? So physical strength, but yet, even though we are limited in our physical strength, yet we can rejoice because as I would always say, though limited abilities and capabilities we are, or we have, importante po, cute pa rin tayo. Right, mga mothers? Cute pa rin tayo. Though we have limited tooth, or teeth, whatever tense you might have, importante, we can, eat, we can still eat fried chicken and lechon this coming December. <laughs> right? Kala din na kayo home ka mo. Ang baboy, okay na. Still with the... Uh... Oh, okay. Okay, last time, diba daw na grounded ang mga baboy because of the disease? Okay na. Okay. But nonetheless, my dear friends, whatever mode of insufficiency you have, can you still rejoice? Oh, speaking of the heart, I saw a, I saw a heart. Many people now are insufficient because they thought they do not have a loved one. Wala sila partner. Wala sila sang gina holding hands. Right? Wala sila sang gina date. So their lives are incomplete. They are insufficient. Oh my gulay vegetables. Hindi ako wala. Man sang gina holding hands. Gayo ho man yapon. Ow! Kadlang yung sarayos. No? So seriously speaking, my dear friends, in our insufficiency, we can still equate it to rejoicing because it is during these times that we can experience the grace of the Lord. In our insufficiencies, we can experience the strength of the Lord. Kung malamig man po ang Pasko mo ngayong Pasko, it's okay. May kumot naman eh. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay? 
jokingly said, just turn off the electric fan and uh, the aircon. Hopefully, may, may ilaw na po kami. We had brought out since around 1 o'clock this morning. Okay? But, in our insufficiencies, can we see the hand of the Lord working? In our passage this morning, we are again reminded there of the story that Jesus Christ fed the 5,000 men. Take note, 5,000 men. Because it was only the men who were recorded, the women and children were not. So we can say there were more than maybe roughly 10,000. Because men alone is 5,000 and the source of the food or the loaves and the fishes was a child. So for sure there were also a, a few hundreds of them around. But can we say that these disciples were insufficient in their belief? that God or Jesus Christ can provide food. Can we somehow ask that what happened to the disciples that they still ask the Lord, where will we get food? Right? Upon seeing the multitude, they said, Master, send them to the villages. Send them away so that they can also get food for them. They can buy food for themselves. And so maybe we can say, humanly speaking, nowadays maybe we can say, Disciple ka, you have been going with Jesus Christ, healing, doing miracles, but now you are questioning where to get food. So somehow we can say that, haven't you learned anything yet? Haven't you seen enough to believe? Just like many of us, my dear brethren, many times in our lives, situations, struggles, problems will beset us. Especially if we would open our wallets and see that walay laman. Right? We have a couple of cards, but it's just a card. Walay laman pa rin ang card. Right? We have a few pieces of paper in our wallets, but they are just pieces of paper. No value at all. Oh, yes, correct, Mother Rose. Lista ng utang. Okay? We might have many friends around us, but we still feel insufficient because we might need a shoulder to hold on, but nobody is there. So these disciples were confronted with insufficiency of food literally but somehow we can also say they are confronted with insufficiency of faith that they doubted or questioned the power of the master so if you put it on today's context my dear friends what is the insufficiency that you are facing right now? What are you lacking of today? Do not answer me money because that is very literal. That is given. Maybe you would say, Pastor, I am lacking of grades. Last night in our chat group, in one of my chat groups, the kids were posting their grades. My dress, my... <laughs> my failure, you know. And I said, you can do it, kaya mo na. 36 out of 100, that's still good. 
I said during my time in chemistry, five items, zero. <laughs> but the five items is worth 50 points. Kay Ma'am San Luis, and still zero. Sa anatomy, passing core, 3.15, my grade was 3.16. Oh, di ba? Insufficient of point one. And so, we can go on and on and on. But in these, or with these insufficiencies, can we rejoice? Can we still laugh and say, Lord, thank you that even though wala ko money, I can still smile. Lord, thank you even though we do not have food on the table, we are still together. Can we still say that, Lord, thank you even though I'm still single, at malamig ang Pasko, or I have just broken up with my partner, can we still say thank you? Or maybe we are sick. Can we still say thank you, Lord, for this sickness? Maybe we have lost a loved one. Can we still say thank you? Yesterday, I visited a dear friend sa, sa Pacho. Porte, no? Nabisita sa Abyan. Kung nabisita kay tatay sa Pacho, no? <laughs> Mother? Ay, ah, hindi, hindi. Kaya ti pista sa buong sa Santa Barbara mo. So, pista sa Santa Barbara and every fiesta, every fiesta sa Santa Barbara, bonding moment naman sa sang, sang best friend ko. No, but because he died already, last 2020, so the younger brother said, subuong ka kanto pas, kay matawai ang patsuway traffic. <laughs> so I said, well, okay. So, kahapon ako nagkatsa sa patsu and uh, bonded with him somehow. But yes, can we still say thank you? In moments of of hurt, in moments of desperations, in moments of loneliness, can we still say, Lord, I rejoice. Though it is difficult, though it is painful, Though at times you would say, I surrender. But my dear friend, we are reminded that in our moments of insufficiencies, it is where we can experience the strength, the provision, the care, the sustaining grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is during these times that we can experience the sufficiencies of His goodness. If and only if we would look at things on the bright side of life. So in moment as these, the disciples found five loaves of bread and two fishes. But again, they said, Lord, it's impossible. We only have five loaves and two fishes, but we have more than 5,000 mouths to keep. Where will we get? To make the long story short, the Lord prayed and they were able to gather extra baskets of food. There are a lot of arguments if we if we look at this closely people would say it was indeed a miracle that literally the bread and the fish multiplied There are also interpretations that would say the miracle was the change of heart by the people knowing the Knowing the culture of the Israelites or the people during this during this time, most of them would only have brought 
enough for themselves. Right? If we go picnic, if we go camping or beach or whatever, we would just basically bring something or enough for ourselves. Right? But here in MCBC, wala yan sa directory namin. Right? We do not just bring enough for ourselves. Right? But we also bring enough for the take home. <laughs> right? Ganun po kami dito sa MCBC. No? We always bring more than enough. So going back to the feeding, I don't know which one would you would you believe, whether it's the literal multiplication of the food and fish or the change of heart of the people that from being selfish, Fish. it opened their hearts to being gracious. A heart of thinking only for himself became a heart of sharing to people. A heart of only thinking about me and myself, it opened and thought of, would you, would you care to have something? Do you have something more? Nowadays, my dear friends, it's very difficult to share what we have. Right? It's difficult to share food. But, why is it so easy to share your partner? <laughs> it's difficult to share the property or to lend money or yeah, to, to share food or to share time. But in our culture, in our society, it's very easy to share your wife or your husband or your girlfriend or boyfriend as the case may be. Last few days, I had chatted with a few friends who had this problem. Broken family because the husband, instead of sharing his time with his family, is sharing it with somebody else. The wife, instead of taking care of the children, is taking care of somebody else. The girlfriend or boyfriend, instead of spending time with the right guy or right girl, it's somewhere there. Iba ang kapartner sa baby time. Where is our culture going? Where is our value going? And so, many would think and would say, Ang team song nila is, Babalik ka rin. <laughs> right? Babalik ka rin. No? Or maybe, some people would say, Sige, sa'yo na siya muna. Pag pumantay ang paa, Babalik ka rin. <laughs> right? But that's the beauty of being a Filipino. We can laugh at these situations. But it hurts. Chris, masabong no nga puro lava gina istorya. <laughs> Excuse me. Puro lava gina istorya nga example. No kalayo po man sa Valentine's Day. Di pa bati-bati lang siya mga kauturan nga siya bingkong. <laughs> But well, again, my dear friends, if we look at it in our insufficiency of our partners with our partners in life, we can enjoy blessings as well. Blessings because we become stronger. Blessings because we have developed 
creativity, creativity in addressing things in a different angle. We have developed a sense of independence and how to go about and overcome these experiences in a different context, in a more positive way. In my case, if I were married a few years back, I could have not done so many things. If I were married a few years back, for sure I would have several kids and would not be here in front of you right now standing. We would not be here with you on social media because for sure I would be somewhere else working hard for my family. Don't get me wrong, my dear friends. I am not saying that being separated with your partner is a good thing. I am not saying that it is ethical to separate. I am not saying that it is wrong to welcome back your, your partner or your fiancé. But it is the learning process that goes with it. Of course, for the couples, it's a different situation compared to those partners who are not yet married. Sakto mga mothers, so if you are not yet married, you better think twice if that is really the right partner for you. Okay? You better think twice if that is really the right person. Or better yet, as I would always advise my kids, you ask yourself, am I the right person for this girl or for this guy? Am I sufficient enough to make this child of God rejoice with me forever? Then the Jesus Christ instructed his disciples maybe to sit back, relax, and he prayed. Then everybody was in awe. Everybody was fed with a surplus. Everybody rejoiced. So how would we put it on this context? The impossible became possible with Jesus Christ. And so, in our, city, in, in our setting today, we have a lot of impossibilities going on around us. We have a lot of things happening that we would say it's the end but God said or God says no it's not the end there is still a way out it's not period but just a comma or maybe you would ask why did the Lord allow this to happen? Or maybe we could say, where did the trust and confidence of these disciples go? We can criticize them. We can pinpoint a lot of reasons. In our context, we can blame people. We can blame ourselves. We can blame God. Because we have a lot of questions at that specific time, at the specific situation when we are being hurt, when we are experiencing insufficiencies. 
But the Lord has been kind and compassionate to all of us. He is answering our prayers, providing our needs. But we are just hard-headed. We are blind to see these answers and these blessings for us to rejoice because we are so focused on the negative side. We cannot see the rejoicing part behind the tears because we are so engulfed with the tears. So instead of panicking this morning, my dear friends, sit back, relax. Jesus is saying to us, I got this, my friend. I got you, my son. I got, I got your back, daughter. So instead of being troubled, we would rejoice. A few days ago, in one of the posts of a dear friend and sister in faith, she said, Lord, why this? But, kaya ko to. I can do this. Kapit lang. Yes, utod. Kapit lang. I know you are watching right now. And my heart beats with you. But yes, kapit lang. Hold on strong. Cry if you must. Weep if you must. But after the tears have dried, stand up. Rise up. And continue on. Tuloy ang laban. Ika nga push. Lang ng push. Pray until something happens. Insufficiency is perhaps threatening us. Insufficiency might perhaps telling us stop, quit. But Jesus Christ is saying the opposite thing. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, my son. Come to me, daughter. I got you. Jesus Christ is teaching us one step at a time. So instead of remaining down, defeated, let's tell the burden, let's tell the situation, Sisiw ka lang. My God is bigger than you. My God is more sufficient than you. Sa mga manalamig ang Pasko, or to those who have just broken up, or to those who are breaking and broken, the Lord is there. We should be conscious that He should be our first love. Because God is confident that we can handle it. God is confident that we are able to hold through with it. As we always say, God does not give us problems or situations that we cannot handle. It's always, kaya mo yan. If and only if, we would look at it on the right angle. We can do it because God is there. And God is allowing us to go through it. If and only if, we would look at it on the right perspective. If and only if, we will harvest 
the investment that no matter how how insignificant these resources are we would only or we only need to seek God we should only keep in touch and strengthen our connection with the God of all gods up there mercifully the Lord does not give up on us though many times we are unworthy though many times we have been hard-headed but our loving God is always there reaching for us extending his loving arms to us telling us sit back pray with me hold my hand so as we have the third advent today the third advent means joy go death amidst our insufficiency do we have joy or can we rejoice in the midst of our insufficiency or lackingness or discrepancy or nothingness or whatever you will call it can we still enjoy can we still smile Well, the answer, my dear friend, is believe it or not, yes, na yes, na yes.